Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Manatui, coach of the Tampa Bay Lux Rays, and today I'm bringing you guys week 4 of NPL Miners. Uh, I'm really sorry that this is uh, a few days late. My excuses are basically the same as usual, where uh, I can't record while I'm at school, and upload days are Thursdays, and I don't get home from school till Friday, and then, like, for the last week or so I've been sick, so I didn't want to record this because my throat hurts, and then I'm lazy, so... Regardless, it's here now, so we're gonna... We're gonna just jump into it. Uh, for a quick team breakdown, I don't have a team builder for this week. I will try and get back into those for the NPL. Uh, it is just very difficult because I feel bad because like I'm already uploading it late, so then I upload a team builder late and then I upload the game even later. Uh, but for a quick rundown of the team, we have Choice Bandit, Zygarde, and relatively standard with Toxic as well. We have an interesting uh, Snorlax set. It is Ice Punch, Earthquake, Toxic, and Rest with it holding the Chesto Berry. It kind of just deals with everything on its team very nicely. Uh, Earthquake obviously to hit the Magirna as well as the Skun Tank, Toxic for the Tangrowth, Ice Sponge to hit the Aerodactyl, as well as I believe you have something else on this team that it hit, uh, I believe it was the Dragon. Uh, then we have a Choice Scarf Heatran which puts in a lot of work, outspeeds everything on its team bar the Mega Aerodactyl, or possibly like a Scarf Starmie or something along those lines. It also has Dark Pulse in order to hit that Starmie which is cool. We have a Sash Suicide Lead Lycanroc, we have a Scarfed what do you call this thing? Scarf Tapu Bulu, which puts in a lot of work as soon as the uh, Tangrowth is gone. I'm also running Toxic on this to help deal with the Tangrowth. And then we have a Black Sludge T-Spike setting Dragalge. And even though he has Scum Tank, T-Spikes are really nice for his team, particularly for the uh, Tangrowth. If he's a natural st cure Starmie, it'll be very nice to deal with. Same thing with Ambor, I can wear that type thing down a lot. And uh, the other members of his team that he did not bring were kind of weak to T-Spikes. So Regardless, let's just get into the game real quick. He is going to lead with his Starmie, I'm going to lead with my Lycanroc. Like I said, this is meant to not really last very long, so I'm just going to go for my Stealth Rock turn 1. He's going to go for the Scald, it fails to knock me out, but unfortunately he's going to get the burn. However, we are going to survive on 1 HP, and I'm going to attempt to save this thing as fodder for later on. Uh, also, I expect him to go for the Rabbit Spin right here, so there's no point in me stacking off my uh, Lycanroc at this point. Uh, now, I'm expecting him to want to go out into Tangrowth on the Wood Hammer, so I'm going to go right for a Toxic as he actually makes the play out in a Scum Tank. Which I thought was kind of interesting because Woodhammer in the grassy terrain would have done a ton to this thing, but uh, maybe he's watching me a lot and seeing that I'd like to run Toxic on things. I'm going to switch out into um, Dragalge as he sends an Embor. Because of the grassy terrain and the Shokaberry, this Earthquake is going to do absolutely nothing, and I'm going to be able to go for the Hidden Power Ground, expecting either his. Uh, uh, his. Er, yeah, ground. He, either his uh, Magirna to want to come in or for him to stay in an attack. He's actually going to pull the switch out into his Tangrowth, interestingly enough. And then on the following turn, uh, as you're going to see here, he is actually going to go out. Uh, I'm not Black Sludge, I'm Sugarberry, by the way. He's then going to double out into his Scum Tank. However, I'm going to be able to go for a layer of T Spikes, which is very nice. And then because I know I can hurt this thing a lot, I'm going to stay in and go for a Dragon Pulse, doing a lot of damage to this thing while being able to take that crunch very easily. Now, here, I'm pretty sure he's going to switch out, so I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Ground. Uh, did not expect him to send in Aerodactyl on a possible Dragon Pulse, but. Uh, clearly he predicted me and went for the HP ground. He's then going to double back out into Scum Tank to absorb the Toxic Spikes. Good play on his part, as I'm going to go out into my Snorlax. And what I can do here is fire off an attack, as I'm actually going to go for the Earthquake, as he sends in his Embor immediately, and I knock that thing out. Uh, so something important to note, that wasn't really a bad play, but um, I've shown Curse Lax in pretty much every week that I've brought it. So he was super afraid of me starting to just set up and go, because if I was Curse Lax, I could have possibly won there. Uh, however... Thankfully, because uh, I have Earthquake and I'm not Curse Lax this time, I was able to knock out the Embor, which is great, because that thing is very difficult for me to switch into. Uh, he's going to send in his Tangrowth here and go for the Leech Seed. Thankfully, I have a Toxic, however, I'm going to end up missing that Toxic, and that's going to be super annoying, because this thing being a little down turn for turn would have been awesome. Uh, but, you know, that's unfortunately not what happens. I'm going to go for the uh, double here out into Dragalge, expecting either his Starmie or his Magirna to want to come in, more than likely Starmie. However, now I'm going to pull a double out into my Snorlax, expecting him to want to go out into his, um, his Magirna, and I could have hit that thing with an Earthquake and take whatever he wanted to do. However, he's just going to stay in and go for the Scald, and I'm going to get burnt, which is a little unfortunate, but I am Resto Chesto on the Snorlax, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to go for the Toxic on this thing. I know he's probably Natural Cure, but I want to whittle this thing down anyway. Uh, because it is super annoying and I want to force him to switch out at some point, which is going to happen on this turn. Uh, because of the burn, I am forced to um, go for the rest relatively soon, so I'm going to go for the Earthquake, trying to get a little bit of chip damage off onto him as he goes into Tangrowth, and then he's going to pull a double back out into his Starmie once again as I go for the rest, getting myself back up to a good amount of HP. Uh, so this is still an okay situation for me, I got my Snorlax back at full health, his Starmie is still at full health, but 
it's not too too bad. I'm gonna go back out into my Dragalge here, I know he can take the uh, Skull very easily and I don't know if he has the Psychic move to hit me, as the the fact that he switches out confirms the fact that he does not have Psychic. Uh, here he's, I'm gonna go for the T-Spikes just to be able to uh, possibly get some poisons on things that want to come in or force out his gun tank. Uh, once again, he's going to go for the Aerodactyl play as I go for Hidden Power Ground, uh, calling that play once again perfectly. Now he's going to go out into his uh, Skun Tank as I'm going to pull the switch out into my Snorlax. And um, <coughs> I believe on this turn I go right for the Earthquake. Yes, I go right for the Earthquake. It's going to hit his Starmie. Uh, once again, I'm just going to go for a Toxic on this thing because there isn't really all that much else I can do. He's going to burn me again, and I'm going to miss my Toxic again because why not? Um... And it's the game we play, and uh, now he is just going to switch out into his scum tank on the turn that I click Earthquake. Uh, with the, without the burn, that would have been an easy kill, however, uh, it's not too big of a deal of what I can do now, is just switch out. I believe I switch out, or do I go for Earthquake again? No, I go for Earthquake again, because I take whatever scum tank wants to do. Um, I do technically beat his Starmie 1v1, he has to switch out in order to beat me, and I have rest and instant recovery, so even if he has recover, um, it's not going to help him for toxic damage, so I'm just going to go for a toxic here again. Uh, once again, force him to just switch out in order to deal with it, and then on this turn, I believe I go for the rest because I'm getting relatively low, and I still need my Snorlax for things like the Magirna, uh, as well as the fact that once Magirna's gone, it completely beats his team, so I want to keep Snorlax healthy. Uh, he's going to switch out now, taking advantage of the fact that I'm asleep, and he's going to go right out into his Aerodactyl as I'm going to pull a switch out into my Heatran, so a good play on his part. Uh, I, however, have to switch out because, unfortunately, Mega Aerodactyl is going to be able to outspeed um, max speed Scarf Heatran, which is very good for him. However, I'm going to switch out into Tapu Bulu, expecting the possible Earthquake as he goes into Starmie. And what this means is now I can go for the Toxic once again. No, I'm going to go for Woodhammer. That's right. I go for Woodhammer because I didn't know if he'd want to go Scum Tank. He's also going to reveal the Rocky Helmet on his, um, on his Tangrowth. Uh, good prep on his part. However, I can switch back out into my Heatran. Even if he goes for the Earthquake, I can take it. He's going to end up going for Leech Seed instead. And then he's going to make a play I didn't really expect coming. He, I thought he would go back out into his Starmie in order to take this, but he's actually just going to stay in and go for the Earthquake. Once again, because of the Grassy Terrain, I will be able to take it. Um, and with the uh, Grassy Terrain recovery that it's giving plus leftovers, I'm not losing too much to Leech Seed, which is nice. However, because I'm locked into um, Dark Pulse, I can't really stay in there. So I'm going to switch back out in my Tapu Bulu, expecting his Starmie to want to come out. As you're going to see, that is exactly what happens. And now what is going to happen is I am going to go for the Toxic. As he goes into Tangrowth, we're going to hit it this time. This Tangrowth is finally poisoned. Turn 34 should have been poisoned like turn 2, but that's okay. We did our job, and now we can just stall this thing out with other Pokemon on our team. So I'm going to go out into a Snorlax, take absolutely nothing from that Sludge Bomb. And then on this turn, I believe I'm just going to go for like whatever, trying to wake myself up. And uh, since that was the last turn of sleep, I will be able to wake up on the following turn. Uh, so what uh, he decides to do is go on to Starmie to attempt to beat me and I'm just going to stay asleep so that I can wake up on the next turn. Uh, which again, useful because Snorlax is super useful. Uh, he's going to pull a double back out into his Tangrowth. I am going to pull a switch out into my Dragalge, so this is good for me. And he actually expected to outspeed me, but as you can see, I am going to be able to outspeed him and hit him with a Sludge Wave. I had a little bit of speed on this thing, specifically for Speed Creeping Tangrowth, so that's really nice. So things are looking really good for me at this point, and then in this turn, things are looking very not good for me, because I'm going to go for the HP Ground. That's going to do absolutely nothing to Magirna. Uh, and then I just like pretty much lose. I go to stack my Lycanroc as he goes for the Shift Gear, so he's Double Dance, and then I lose the game. So, uh... Yeah, uh, he's gonna get Soul Heart, even though I died a burn, uh, so, uh, my only hope now is that, uh, Snorlax crits it with Earthquake, and then I can knock it out with E-Speed, so Earthquake, no, not no crit, and, uh, he's gonna Aura Sphere me in the face, and then I'm gonna go down, and then, uh, Scarf E-Tran can't outspeed this thing, Scarf Tabu Bulu can't outspeed this thing, I'm like, maybe he doesn't have a move to hit me, no, of course he has a move to hit me, why wouldn't he have a move to hit me, so, uh, you know, um, Magirna is a fun Pokemon to play against, as you can see. Like, they're really... The only thing I... The only play I could have made to avoid this situation would have been to have hard-switched into my Zygarde 15... Per, or my Zygarde 10% as he went for Calm Mind. But also, like, if he went for... <coughs> um, if he went for, what's the move called? Shift Gear, instead of going for Calm Mind the first turn, he still would have won. Um, but, uh... Like, like, even he would have won 100%. So, Combine was actually a little bit of a misplay on his part in case I went into Zygarde 10%, but I didn't, so it didn't matter anyway. And again, he set up later on in the battle anyway. Like, there was pretty much nothing I could do with the team that I built to stop this thing from doing what it did. 
Magirna's... I, I would say Magirna's probably broken, not just because I lost to it. I don't want to make it sound like because I lost to it, I think it's broken. Uh, I've seen it in use of, in a few other leagues, and I think it's just a little bit too good for draft format, or for standard draft format. Like, its typing is too good. Like, Fairy Steel is the best typing in the game. It hits way too hard, its move pool's way too good, and it's super bulky. Like, the only drawback that this thing has is its speed, which even then you can take advantage with Trick Room sets. And uh, even that doesn't really matter all that much when you get access to Autonomize, and you set up on so many different things because of how bulky you are, and the fact that you can't be poisoned and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't blame Muse the best either. Like, if I, if I was round one, I would totally draft this thing and then shit on everyone I played with it, but uh, unfortunately he ended up getting it, and he ended up playing us, and he ended up completely destroying us. Also props to him because he brought literally the perfect set for my team. Like, he genuinely 6 0 me with this Pokemon. Um, I think he got 5 kills and then uh, Lycanroc died to burn, so uh, very well done. Uh, even though you're using a broken Pokemon, you're using that Pokemon perfect, broken Pokemon perfectly, and I cannot fault you for that whatsoever. Uh, that's our first loss in NPL Miners. It kind of sucks, but it's not too big of a deal. We're still 3-1. Uh, we still have a relatively good record as well as relatively good differential. Uh, so thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next game. I'm not sure who that's against. But hopefully I will be able to put out a Team Builder video as well as a game video for that. Uh, because I do enjoy putting those up and I know a lot of you guys like that. So once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next game.